All right, Regis Progre is the WBC 140-pound title holder. On December 9th, he will defend his belt against Devin Haney, the former undisputed 135-pound champion. It's a fight you can watch live on DAZN pay-per-view in the U.S., part of your subscription over in the U.K. So, Regis, the last big fight that you were in was against Josh Taylor back in, what was it, 2019. Does Mm -hmm. this fight feel bigger? No, it actually doesn't. No, no, no. Um, I, I feel like the Josh Taylor fight was bigger. Um, it was, you know, it was it just felt bigger. I mean, you know, I think Devin is a you know, Devin is a big name and stuff like that, but I felt like the Josh Taylor I did feel like the Josh Taylor fight was bigger just because um, you know, I went to a whole different country. It was in, you know, we was in the finals for the super series and I went to a whole different country. So it did feel it just had a it had a bigger it just had a bigger feel to it for me. Does does that experience going through that with Josh Taylor give you any kind of of advantage going into this fight? I think so. It does, you know, because I, it's like I've been through. You know, they say you learn from your you you learn more from your failures than you learn from you know your wins and stuff like that. So, um, it definitely gives me way more of an I feel way more of an advantage, you know, going into this. You know, it, like experiencing that and like experiencing it on a whole different level. You know, like I experienced it. You know, for me, I experienced that on a level where, you know, I had to go to a whole different country. You know, it wasn't just, you know, fighting in somebody's back. It was fighting in a whole different country. And I was over there for, you know, like I said, I think I was over there for like a month and a half or something like that. So it, it definitely gives me um a different, you know, a different experience. So the face off between you two guys has just taken off. It had more than half a million views in the first a uh, couple of days, Matchroom posted mm-hmm. it on its social page. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was obviously there with you guys for that. And and honestly, I can't tell if there is a genuine beef between you and Devin Haney, because at times it sure as hell looks like you don't like him. At times, though, it looks like you kind of like him and you're having a little bit of fun with them at the same time. So how would you describe it? It's both, you know, like it is. I think it's beef because we fight each other. You know, I like I don't. I don't like him, right? I don't. I don't like him, the Haney. I don't like Bill. I don't like none of the Haney's right now because we have to fight. You know, it's not like I don't like him as a person and not like that, but I don't like him right now. I don't. You know, I, it's like I'm disgusted with him right now because I have to fight him. When you, when you, when you have to fight somebody, that's just how you have to be. You know, I can't. Oh, I can't just say, oh, I like him and I'm cool with him. Nah, like we, we about to fight. So no, I don't like him right now. I don't. You know, he disgusts me right now. His team, they, they disgust me right now because we have to fight. I can't. I can't think of them as friends right now you know so I, um as far as genuine beef like for me i come from a different i come i come from a different atmosphere so when beef me will beef with me means something different you know we talk about something just totally different so no nah, it's not like that type of beef but yeah fighting wise now nah, we, we gotta fight and i don't like them so i guess it is beef in y'all world you know you you and your trainer during the the press conference and you know, over the last couple of weeks, have kind of pushed this narrative that, you know, Devin's kind of a, a different kind of fighter. You know, your trainer called his career kind of choreographed. You use the word manufactured to describe Devin Haney. What do you mean by that? What do you guys mean by that? I just, well, I don't, I mean, my my trainer, he, I'm not gonna lie, he goes off the deep end sometimes. He says all <laughs> kinds of stuff, you know, that's, he, man, he been in more, he been on more interviews than me right now, to be honest. He been just talking, 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 you know, for me, I just think he had an easier route than he did have an easier route than me for sure. You know, that's what I mean by manufacture. Like I came up the hard route. I did. Like I had to, you know, I used to fight for, you know, a dollar check and stuff like that, you know, and I came up the hard route. I had to beat, I had to beat like undefeated fighter after undefeated fighter to get where I'm at. And, you know, I didn't get signed right off the top, you know, and for me, he had it, you know, he had it easy, you know, he had, um, even at the face off, I was like, man, how many jobs you had? You know, like he's never had a job in his whole life. You know, like that's crazy to me. Like I used to like to get where I'm at, man, I really grinded. I really bust my ass to get where I'm at and um, working jobs with a fam- with a with a, a, a family, with a wife and a kid. And I had to work and I still had to, you know, do this. And I still had to train like I'm training right now. And he never had that. He never experienced that. So that's what I mean. Like manufacturing, like you never had to do you just never had to do what I had to do. You had the you had the easier route. You know, I'm not gonna say he had an easy road, but he definitely had it easier than I did coming up for sure. Let's talk a little bit about your training for this fight because one of the things you've said over the last few weeks is that you are very much capable of outboxing Devin Haney. I think everybody knows you've got the power advantage in this fight, but you believe you've got the skills advantage as well that you have have that 
ability in you. Is is any of that kind of a Jedi mind trick you're trying to play on Devin no, Haney I, here? I or? feel like that. No, I, I actually feel I, I know I have the skills. To, I cannot box Devin. I mean, people like I don't I don't go. I'm not I don't believe what the people say. The people can say oh, this. The people can say that. The media can say all kinds of stuff. I don't believe that. I believe in myself truly 100 percent. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I truly believe I'm I'm be I'm a better fighter. I, I really believe I'm a better fighter overall, you know. But the thing is, like, you know, with him. He has to show that over 12 rounds. I, I hurt people. I know what I do. I hurt people. And but I can, you know, I can box if I need to, I can box and stuff like that. But if I catch somebody clean, most likely I'm gonna hurt them and it might be over. So, you know, I think that's why it's um it's a little difference because you know, he don't knock nobody. He's known for going 12 rounds. He has to, but you know, me, I'm I stop people. Uh you're training in LA for this fight. Is this the first time you've trained in LA? No, this is the longest though. Um, I I've actually been out here a total of like two months. You know, I started. I really, man, it's, it's been a long camp. I started in Texas. Um, I've been like in camp for four months for this fight already. So it's like kind of like double. And I've been here. You know, I, I started out there in Texas. Then I came here for a month. Then I went back to Texas for my kid's birthday. I stayed for three weeks, and I'm out here for another month. So total, I've been out here for like two months in um in LA. And, you know, it's just just because I'm so serious about this fight. You know, I never did. I never did this before. I only usually I come to L.A. I'll stay about two weeks, two or three weeks. And that's it. But this time I stayed for two months. So, yeah, I'm just it's just a it's just a big difference right now was, you know, I'm just I'm so serious about this. This, this is a you know, this is the this is a big fight. So I'm just serious about my training and just taking everything like I need to. And I feel like the, you know, just like sparring out here is I, I think I'm not going to say better, but, you know, I had some really good, I, I started sparring out here and I had some really good um sparring partners. So I was like, man, I'm going to just, I'm going to stay in LA. So what's your corner going to look like for this fight? Because you've got a longstanding training relationship with Bobby Benton. You've been out here in LA working with Julian Chua and the people at Brickhouse. Mm -hmm. What's it going to look like on fight night? Well, Bobby and Julian, it'll be Bobby and Julian. Julian and Bobby, they, they, you know, they same thing, working together hand in hand, and and, and that's how it's gonna be. Does I mean that you say both, but does there need to be just one voice? Or are you comfortable with you know a couple? I mean, I think it's gonna be no. Nah, I'm, I'm comfortable with a couple. I mean, I think last fight it was too many. It was like four people talking to me last fight. But I think like I'm I'm cool with a couple, just like it is in sparring. You know, like you know, most of the time right now in sparring, Julian, you know, he been saying you know one thing, he been saying the first words, and then you know Bobby will come on the back end and stuff like that. Most of the time, you know, they agree on what I need to do, so it that's how it'll be. So let's talk about the last fight. You defended your title against Danielito Zaria. Uh, you've said many times it was a bad fight, not your best performance. Uh, when you look back at that fight, how much of the ugliness of it do you put on Zaria, and how much of it do you put on yourself? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's more myself. I mean, <laughs> because I'm the fighter, I should have definitely went out there and stopped him. You know, it's not... Um, but yeah, he went out there. He just came to survive. He came to run around to survive. And, you know, and then on, on top of me, just not coming off the ring. You know, the thing is like we, um, well, I don't really watch too many tapes, but you know, my coach watched tapes on him and, you know, everything he just, he was there, you know, but this fight, you know, and so I had sparring partners that, you know, that was, you know, that was there for me, you know, and like, he just literally ran around the ring. I mean, not all like they boxed a little bit, but he literally just ran around the ring. And so that's, I was just, for me, just chased them around. You know, it was something that we just didn't work on. And obviously, I know how to cut the ring off, but, you know, just, like I said, ha having the off night, being in New Orleans, all that, it just, this was a bad night. He did fight very differently than I thought he was going to. His previous fights, he had banged a little bit. He had some power. Mm -hmm. I, I had never seen him move as much as he did against you. Right. Yeah, exactly. He. That's what I'm saying. We we watched him and they 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 picked him because like he was a last minute replacement. He came in like three weeks. So, you know, three weeks before the fight. So, yeah, he just and his team actually said that they said we came just to survive. We came just to run. So it was yeah, it was it was bad. You know, Devin has said that he called you out well before that fight took place. But if you had knocked Zuria out in the first round or the second round, do you think we'd be here right now? No, no, this is a blessing. It, I keep telling people, man, if anybody to thank for this fight is Daniel Lethal Zaria. <laughs> is anybody to thank for this fight? If I were to knock Zaria out, Devin would not be fighting me, man. I'll be fighting my mandatory or something like that. Not even a big fight. But now, because of that happened, you know, I'm fighting, you know, I'm fighting Devin on, you know, probably the biggest fight and in the year. So, 
yeah, man, like I'm 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 just glad that it happened. It's a for me it is a blessing in disguise. And you know, and like even like going into last camp, you know, my friend, my friends is here with me and stuff, and they were like, Man, last camp just so different from this fight. Like this camp, like last camp, it was just like just kind of going through the motions. And that's kind of how I felt too. And this camp is everybody's excited, you know, and I'm obviously I'm the most excited. So it's just a it's it's just a different feel on just all around. Devin's coming off that win over Lomachenko, a, a win that a lot of people have questioned in the aftermath. What did you think of it? I'm not gonna. At first, I thought he lost. At first, then I kind of went back and rewatched and stuff like that. And I thought, I thought he pulled it off. I think it was if it was just a, if it was just a Devin and just a Lomachenko, then maybe Loma could have won. But Devin was the champion, you know? So you have to do, I think you have to do more than that to get it from the champion, you know? But everywhere I went, so I was in New Orleans watching that fight and I went, like, I went to like a bar or something like that. And everybody was like, man, he lost that fight. Man, boxing is rigged. He lost, he really lost that fight and all that stuff. And that's what people were saying. But it was a close fight. Devin was the champion. So I think he deserved to keep his belts. Now, if it was just, if it, like I said, if it wasn't no belts involved, then maybe... Loma could have, you know, put could have pulled it off, but Devin was the champion. I don't think Loma did enough to to win it. And of all the fights to say boxing is rigged, that's not one of them. When you have mm -hmm. a close fight and it goes 15 13 one way, 15 13 the other, that is in my mind that is not a robbery, that is not stealing a fight, rigging. Yeah, a fight. yeah, yeah. Well, you know the, the average fan, they don't know. You know the average <laughs> fan. I was like I said I was in a bar in New Orleans and there was like they was all oh, boxing rig. I'm not watching boxing no more. And, you know, he really lost his fight. And that's what they were saying. But, you know, people, a lot of people fans just don't understand. That's just how it is. You are a very different fighter than Lomachenko, just like you're a very different fighter than Jojo Diaz. But both those guys hit Devin with left hands. Do you see, not that you're going to fight the same way, but do you see how they were doing it? Do you see weaknesses in Devin's game that leaves him open for that particular shot? He said, I do. I really do. That's what I'm saying. We see, I, I think Devin is not a defensive fighter. That's the thing. He's not, people saying he's this and he's that. I think um, people believe in like the hype and I'm just one of those people that I just don't believe in. I don't believe in the hype. I honestly think it's not going to be a hard fight, to be honest. I really don't see it being a hard fight for me, um, especially once I start landing. So yeah, I, I see that he gets hit. I just, I just know one thing. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to tell no game plans and stuff like that, but I know one thing that if I land those same shots that Loma did, that JoJo did, that Lenaris did, Devin's going to be out of them. I just know that, you know, like I'm one of the biggest punches at 140, you know, and man, I just, I know that if I, when I, when I land, it's not going to be pretty. All right. So last question for you. If you win this fight and Eddie Hearn comes to you the next week and says, look, we can make a fight with Ryan Garcia or we can make a fight with Subriel Matias. Which one would you choose? Ryan Garcia, bigger name, obviously. <laughs> it's a bigger name, yeah. I mean, the most, I told people what I want. I want the biggest fights. I want the biggest fights, the most money. That's it, you know? So, yeah, either one. But if he tell me Subriel Matias is more money than Ryan, then we get Subriel Matias. Like, <laughs> I'm going to say, all right, Ryan or Subriel, who is the biggest money, Eddie? What are we going to do? What's the biggest money? If he says Subriel is the biggest, Sabria, if he say Ryan is the biggest, then Ryan. So it's it's all for me. I just want I want the biggest fights. So you know it doesn't matter the names. I just I literally just want the biggest fights. What do you think of Matias? He's coming off that win over Ergashev, and he's starting to get kind of that public reputation as like the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna want to fight this guy. Too big, too him. strong. <laughs> I'll fight him. I'm to, I'll fight him. So he said he actually fought on one of my undercards, I think, in New Orleans or something like that. And he said he called me out. But I, I literally, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who this dude was at, at all, you know. And then he was calling me out, same thing. And then he um he won a belt. So it's like, all right, now my eyes are open. And so then, you know, last weekend, you know, he won he won again. So it's like, all right, if now he's become, he's becoming um a bigger name. So, yeah, I'll definitely fight him. I told you I want the biggest, the belts and the biggest names, the biggest fights. That's what I want, you know? So that's it. Well, big one coming up on December 9th. Uh, it's going to be a great week, great event, huge, huge night. Tickets are selling like crazy. I think the pay-per-view is going to do really well uh, as well. Regis, good luck to you, man. I'll see you during fight week. Yes, sir. See you next week.